Oh, uh, wait, there's a camera right here. Um, hey, if you couldn't tell, we're doing a little something different tonight. Is it acoustic night? We thought it would be appropriate as we end our school year kind of like this. But what we love about these nights is that it just really reinforces the fact that we're not singing to you guys. You're not singing at us. We're not singing to words on a screen. But we're singing to a God who's alive and well, and his name is Jesus. So, with that said, we're going to worship the Lord with everything we got. Let's stand. We're going to join in the song of heaven. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the land. And all who come before us, and all who will believe, they sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions. All powers and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy. Oh 
singing. When you move, you make my heart proud. When you fill the room, cause you're here and I know you are moving. Yeah, I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Well, spirit, when you move, you make my heart proud. When you fill the room, cause you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will come down. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart proud. When you fill the room, 
tonight and worship it with all you've got we sing so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah hallelujah and I know it's not much but I'm nothing else fit for a Except for a heart singing hallelujah, oh hallelujah, sing hallelujah, hallelujah, oh hallelujah. One more time we sing hallelujah, So we have a Lord. So we have for you. One more time, just the voices. So I throw up my hands. Praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Just your heart. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every dark starts to break Cause daring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is healing, your name is love. 
and everyone tonight. Amen. Y'all can have a seat. Guys, I uh, just want to talk to you a little bit about um, some things that are going to happen tonight as we kind of wrap up our year of small groups together. And um, so we're going we're gonna to honor some leaders here in just a second. And then um, we're going to hear from our last um, senior speaker this year. And then at the end of that, um, we're going to gather all the seniors up here. And uh, we're all going to pray for them. Um, before they uh, kind of start their journeys toward college and all that. So it's kind of our agenda tonight, then we'll break up into groups. But um, I want to first, just I want to invite um, these leaders up here tonight. Um, Krista, Brieg, Crystal, Scott, and Garen. If you guys could come on up on the stage with us. Um, I know that Crystal can barely walk. Somebody carry her up here, you know. Somebody carry her up here. <laughs> You guys take center stage here. I'm going to take side stage. Come on up. <laughs> you going to make it? And um, Brie Delac, of course, is also one of our leaders. She couldn't be here tonight. But um, all right, you could be both Brie's. Um, I just wanted to, we just wanted to take a second and um, thank you. It, it doesn't seem even adequate, um, but I do want to say the words to you. Um, I just want to thank each and every one of you for your investment in this place. Um, I think I remember for the most part just about how all of you um, got involved. I remember Scott and I sitting down at lunch somewhere in Arlington, and I was like, you need to be a leader. And he's like, well, how much money do you have? And I was like, well, let me see what I got. And I was like, no, that's a joke. That's a joke. But he's like, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. And, and Garen, you came to us. You're like, I want to jump in. I'm like, you're in. You're in, and you did the same. You're like, I want to pour back into students. You came, and it was funny with you. Um, we were like, we were asking people, we're like, who can we get? We need some more leaders. We need some get. And they go, oh, there's this one girl named Crystal. You probably seen her at the coffee shop. I'm like, Crystal? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, can you be a leader? She's like, yes, and all that. And then I remember you coming to me and saying. Hey, do um, you know Bree that you see singing on the stage and stuff? It was like gonna be was gonna be a leader. I'm like, what? I was like, her? That one girl? He was like, I didn't really know you that well, and and that was what? So she was coming. She was coming on Sunday nights anyway, just to hear you guys worship, just to like be a part of singing. And I was like, listen, if you're gonna come, you might as well stay and lead a group. And that's that's how we got Bree Loudon. So nice, so amazing. But um, so, some of you for the entire six years, some of you a little bit less, um, have been investing in here. And, um, you know, Jess was kind of talking about this in middle school tonight about um, it's not, the, the hangar is not about, um, it's certainly not about me, it's certainly not about Jess, it's certainly not about Chris or Lindsay or Jackie or any of our staff. Um, and it's, it's really not about, um, any one thing. It's not about individual students. It's not about um, anything, but it, it is about all of us <laughs> um, investing our lives in each other um, with Jesus at the center. And so when we do that, that, that draws out the best in who we are and, and the best in what the hangar can be, <laughs> because that's what it centers on. And so you guys have just done that so faithfully and incredibly all these years, and I just um, can't thank you enough um, for what you've done. And I know Jess wants to say a few words, and as she does, I'm going to hand these books to you. Yeah, just to say that um, last night I was at the, uh, like the local wedding reception for a girl who was in my very first small group. And so uh, believe me when I say that the, the investment and the time and the energy and the late nights and uh, the sacrifices that you've made over the last however many years matter. They matter. That, um, that it will be you guys that these students call years from now to, to know about their major moments. And when they need somebody, it'll be you guys that they know that they can count on and that they can reach out to uh, no matter how long it's been. And um, that's not because of anything Kyle and I did. It's because of the choices that you've made big and small over the last several years. And so um, thank you so much. Will you guys, all of you, show your appreciation. <laughs> And we'll see you at leader training in September to do it all over again. So. Yeah. 
All right. Um, I want to get selfish for a second. Um, one of the things that um, is uh, the, one of the greatest joys of my life and has been since I've been um, the youth pastor here is that over those years, um, I have been able to be in relationship with you guys. And um, the thing, one of the things that's awesome for me is that I often learn <laughs> stuff from you um, more than I learn from any other th way that I could do it. Um, through life or um, on my own or whatever, but when I'm in relationship with you, you guys teach me things, and um, I, that's just been a, a joy of my life um, all these all these years that I've been here. And um, our senior speaker tonight is Grace Milligan, <laughs> and <laughs> um, I just want to say um, through the years. There's been a couple of things that, um, that you have taught me <laughs> in the way that you lived your life. Um, one of those is courage. Um, I have learned a lot about courage through watching your life and the choices that you have made. Um, perseverance. <laughs> um, I've learned a lot about perseverance from you. I've learned about, a lot about humility um, from you, and I've learned a ton about hope. Um, through the way that you've navigated um, through your life. And um, I think that tonight, if you don't know all of Grace's story, you're going to get some more, and she's going to be able to um, really unpack some things for you that, that you guys are going to walk away learning some things about that. And so I'm excited for you to hear from her tonight, and will you once again just welcome Grace up to the stage. Yeah. Thank you. Can you guys, can you guys hear me? Okay. <laughs> wow, I have been, I'm so happy to be here right now, um, first of all. Um, like Kyle said, my name is Grace. I'm just graduated from Robinson Secondary School, 7th through 12th grade. Um, I've attended this church um, since I was in preschool, kind of on and off, um, but I've been a part of the hangar through and through, 7th through 12th, and um, I've been praying for this night for a long time, um, and I'm just so happy to be here right now, and I'm just going to pray for us really quick before I kind of like jump into everything. Um, dear God, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for this opportunity right now to speak in front of a community that has meant so much to me um, these past six years. I pray that you would bless each and every one of them and that um, you would open their hearts and their ears to hear what I have to say and um, hopefully what they can take something away from what I have to say in, in my story. Um, and yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so I think like a lot of people in this room, I, you know, grew up in like a, in a Christian household. Um, I've known Jesus um, my whole life. You know, I had my little kid Bible and, you know, like I've known the stories of Jesus, you know, my whole life. Um, but I didn't really know, like, or deeply understand God until I kind of started going through, like, some really hard stuff, um, like, some mental health stuff. Um, so, like, some, like, struggles that I had before, like, really understanding God, um, I felt really disconnected from my peers. Um, not because, like, not for, like, reasons that you can see on the outside. I just, I guess I've just always felt kind of out of place um, my whole life. I just never really felt like I had a, I had a group of friends that I really fit in with. Um, I just, I always kind of felt like I was on the outside of things looking in. Um, I also <laughs> grew up with this perfectionist mindset. Um, you know, I'm the oldest of my two amazing younger siblings, and so I put a lot of pressure on myself to um, be a role model for them, and um, to be there for them, and to kind of like show them how, you know, what you know, what they should strive to be, and so um, in the midst of that, I put a lot of pressure on myself. I was really hard on myself, and I just felt like I needed to be perfect, um, and so obviously, like, whenever I would fall short, which is really every day, <laughs> um, it took, like, a toll, and it was very defeating, and I was very discouraging, and it just eventually led into this, like, this relentless anxiety um, that kind of just controlled my entire life. Um, yeah, and then eventually, like, in that anxiety, like, it literally controlled my entire life. Like, 
every thought that I had, everything that I did was like driven by anxiety. Um, you know, and sometimes it was just like, if I didn't get a good grade or if someone didn't want to hang out with me, like it felt like the worst thing ever. And, you know, it was just, it was really hard. Like that is how I live my life. Um, and it was really hard. And eventually, you know, everything around me turned into like a trigger like every conversation I had, every interaction, every thought was a trigger and I eventually just isolated myself in my room, you know, for a lot of like middle school um, because anxiety just controlled everything that I did and it was, it was horrible. And so, you know, I struggled with anxiety and depression, um, mostly seventh, seventh, well, most of my life, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and so even before, you know, what really changed for me, like where everything really kind of fell, like everything kind of spiraled was when COVID happened. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> our class was in, we are freshmen. It was like our March of freshman year. And um, yeah, COVID happened. <laughs> and um, yeah, like I think the biggest thing was isolation, like, you know, being alone and being isolated was like, is like the worst thing that you can do for someone, you know, like with a mental illness. And, um, you know, cause we were meant to be in community. We were created to be around other people. And so not having that was so hard. Um, and, you know, in isolation and during COVID, I um, lost a lot of friends. I, you know, I was really disappointed in people and, you know, people in my life that I thought were my friends or I thought really cared about me, like kind of just, like I just never really heard from them and I kind of just felt like completely alone. Um, like no one really wanted to be my friend and it was, and that was also really hard. Um, so, you know, the theme here is like, I struggled a lot with um, being in isolation and, you know, losing friends and genuinely just feeling completely alone. And I, you know, I'm very blessed. I have two amazing parents who are here tonight um, supporting me. Um, they have, <laughs> they, they have done so much for me and they have created such a loving and supportive household. And um, I don't know, like this, none of this would happen, like I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my parents' support and their unconditional love for me. And so, um, but despite having, you know, a, a whole beautiful family that's full of love and support. Like it was still, like I still felt alone. Like I still, um, I felt like I didn't matter. I felt like I had no purpose in life. I felt like I, I don't know. I just, I just felt like no one really cared about me. And um, yeah, um, but mostly I, I, you know, I felt like I was invisible. I felt like I didn't matter. And I kept asking God like, why am I feeling this way? Why do I feel so alone? And why am I, like, why am I scared of everything? Like, why do I have all this anxiety? Why do I have all this fear? Why do I feel completely alone despite everything? You know, like, there was nothing on the... <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Okay. <laughs> Things looked fine, you know, um, but, you know, I was really struggling um, with, like, more on the inside. Um, and like I said, I kept asking God, like, why is this happening to me? Like, why do I feel like this? Why? Just why? Why am I here? Why is, I, why is this happening to me? Um, I struggled with um, just really intense, like, really extreme emotions, um, and I also struggled with, like, some, like, self-harm and suicidal thoughts. Um, I just really felt like I didn't, like, I didn't matter. Um, I felt like, pe I just felt completely alone. Despite not being alone, I felt completely alone. Um, and to be honest, I didn't really know if I would really ever see the day of my high school graduation. I didn't know, I would never have thought that, you know, back then I never would have thought I would be here. And so I'm just so grateful that, you know, I'm on the other side of this and I can, you know, share this all with you. But anyways, um, the turning point for me was, um, it was one night and I was, you know, I was like 
really anxious. I was struggling. I felt alone. And um, so I want you to, like, I like to use visuals to, like, describe things. So I want you to think of, like, like one of those underground trains, and you're, like, in the train, you're moving really fast, and it's dark all around you. But then, like, sometimes you see, like, a light, um, only for, like, a split second, like, you're passing by, and then you see a light. And so th there was this night where I was just, I don't know, I was struggling. <laughs> it was, you know, pretty typical. But, um, and then I saw this light, like, you know, if you like, for example, if I'm on the train, and it's dark, and then I see a light, and I'm, you know, and it's, um, and to me, like, that was, that was God reaching out to me, um, you know, that was God's light showing himself to me. Um, when I was, you know, moving so fast, it was so dark, you know, I felt like I was spiraling, I, you know, you know, all of a sudden I, I saw God's light, and only for a split second, but I reached out and I, like, I reached out towards it, and I, like, kind of, like, drew to it, or I, I just, like, ran after it, and it was only for a split second, and, you know, I was kind of, like, in this train, you know, <laughs> for a long time, and sometimes I would see lights, you know, pass by, but I wouldn't do anything about them, because I thought, oh, it's too, f the, the light's too far away, the light, you know, <laughs> or it's, um, we're moving too fast, or I'm, I'm too far gone, um, you know, I, I believed that God didn't, like, didn't care about me anymore, um, I believed that no one cared about me, um, and so, it's like, when I saw the light, I was like, oh, he, he would, you know, I'm just too far gone, it's too far away, you know, I can't, um, it's too hard, um, but then one night, <laughs> I was struggling, you know, I was in this low point, and it's dark, and then all of a sudden, I just remembered God, I just thought of God, <laughs> and that was, like, I just kind of had this thought, like, like, God, God is still, God is still there, um, and, yeah, so I, I kind of, and that was, like, a thought that I had not had in a long time, and so I remember, like, I, when I thought of God, like, that was, like, the light <laughs> in the, in the train, um, and, you know, it was only for a split second, and I had passed it by before, you know, I, I had seen, you know, the light, but I just couldn't, like, bring myself to, to run towards it, and then this one night, I just remembered God, and I saw the light, and I just, I ran towards it, and I never looked back, um, and that was kind of, like, the turning point for me, um, it, I didn't, so in the, in the moment, you know, I'm sitting here in my room, and I'm alone, and it's in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden, I just kind of, like, think of God, and I'm like, okay, like, God, maybe God is still out there, like, maybe, maybe, despite all of the lies that were in my head, I thought, maybe, maybe God still is, is still there, and so I remember just praying, like, God, like, please help me, I don't know what's going on, I feel, you know, I, why am I here, why is this all going on, like, please just, I just, it was really just, like, a cry for help, like, you know, and <laughs> in that moment, I just immediately felt so tired, and, and I got up, and I went to bed, I didn't brush my teeth, I didn't wash my face, I just got up, and I went to bed, and I slept through the whole night, <laughs> and you're probably thinking, like, um, why is that a significant moment, like, how is this a turning point, but, <laughs> and I didn't really know until, like, this happened, like, two years ago, but, and then maybe, like, six months ago, less than a year ago, I was, like, reflecting back on this moment, I was thinking about it, and, I just saw God in that moment, and I was like, you know, wait, like, I didn't, like, I didn't know God was in that moment, you know, that was, like, a pretty big moment, I didn't realize God was, was in that moment, um, but, like, when I, when I think about it now, you know, I see God next to me, you know, he was there, he was always there, you know, he had never left my side, um, and then, you know, I guess, like, I just kind of, look, when I look back at that memory, I just see him kind of, like, reaching a hand out towards me, um, and just kind of taking away, like, all of that, all of those heavy feelings, all of that pain and that fear, and was like, you know, we need, let's go to bed. <laughs> like, we can't do anything until we go to bed. <laughs> so, so he kind of just, like, took that, like, at least in the moment, he took that, you know, that heavy burden, and I just went to sleep. And I didn't see God in that moment um, at the time, but when I look back, I see him so clearly, and that, you know, he was there all along, and, um, yeah, 
So that was kind of like the turning point for me. Um, but that wasn't just like the moment and then everything was like fine and you know. Um, it was still, like it was still like a up road journey from there. Um, so I think like we believe God is real. You know, I think most people believe like God is real. But I think sometimes it's like overlooked that, you know, the devil is real too and the enemy is real too. Just as, just as real as God is. And um, the devil, the enemy, you know, whatever evil force <laughs> that's not from God um, will do anything to pull you away from God. Anything. And for me, that looked like tormenting me from the inside out, um, you know, fighting battles that no one could see, um, just spiritual warfare, like extreme, <laughs> like I was fighting for my, my, my life, <laughs> not like on a deathbed, but I was like fighting to like take ownership of my life. Um, you know, in my isolation during COVID and losing lots of friends, you know, the, the enemy saw this as an opportunity to pull me away from God for good. Um, and it just, like, it literally, like, all of my thoughts were lies and filled with fear. Every, I'm like, I'm serious. Like, every thought that I had was a, either a lie or just some kind of, like, anxiety or fear, whatever. Like, you know, it was just, like, it would never stop, <laughs> and um, my heart was, like, dark. It was, like, black. Like, I, all I felt was, like, pain and sadness. Like, I couldn't see joy. I couldn't feel joy. I couldn't feel happy, um, and my soul, you know, I think our soul is, like, our connection to God, our connection to the Holy Spirit, and I don't know. I usually think, <laughs> I usually think of, like, your soul is like something bright or just like this little light. And um, mine was like completely dark um, with fear and, and darkness. And I think, and like, you know, that's how I live my life for like a good year. Like that was, that, and that just wasn't like, oh, it just happened like during the day. Like it happened, it was like relentless. Like every moment of every day, like that is how I was living my life. Um, and like, the hardest part, too, is, like, you know, it was really hard to explain because, like, you know, on the outside, like, everything, like, it doesn't look like that. <laughs> um, but on the inside, like, it was, that's, like, what was going on. It was <laughs> Everything was just dark. Like, there was, like, no hope. There was no joy, there was no love, there was just all like fear and pain and sadness. Um, like I said, like my, my faith had been compromised, like I was fighting for my, for my soul. Um, you know, I think, you know, the devil, the enemy, God, like they both will, like, you know, they will do anything, you know, to, to to get you like on their side or you know they they will do anything you know to either pull you away from God or pull you away from the enemy like but like what gave what gives me hope is that you know God's light always wins and you know my you know like I said like my my head my heart my soul were all like sick or infected with just darkness pain sadness hopelessness and um, and it's not that I didn't, I wasn't looking for God. It's not that I didn't think God was out there. It's that I couldn't see him. Like, it was just all dark. Like, even if I looked, like, I couldn't, I couldn't find him. I couldn't see him. I, and that I didn't really know, like, if he was out there. Um, and, you know, but somehow, you know, and I can't even explain, but, like, somehow in the darkness, like, God's light shone, shone shined through. <laughs> and, um, and, yeah, and, like, I can't even explain it, but somehow, like, when there, it was completely dark, and somehow God's light still found a way to reach me and save me, and I, and I really, I really never looked back. Um, you know, like, like I said, like, all of, like, the darkness, like, everything changed in a single moment 
where God reached his hand out to me and, you know, after so much hopelessness, like I just finally seized the moment and jumped into the light, jumped into God's light and just never looked back. Um, you know, ever since that turning point or that moment, that's kind of when I felt like I understood who God was and what in Jesus. And, you know, like I felt like I just deeply understood, you know, everything about God and, you know, or who God was. Um, after, you know, a year of fighting for my soul in spiritual warfare, God had been faithful to me and helped me take back my life and my faith and reclaim hope, joy, peace, a sense of community, and belonging. He embraced me, broken pieces and all, and um, yeah, and the rest is history. <laughs> but, um, you know, the first step was just kind of taking that small step of just like looking at the light and just kind of like making a choice to, to run after the light. Um, I really can't put into words like how much my life has changed since this moment. Um, you know, stepping into God's light, I've seen the world through a sense of love and joy and peace. And there are people in this room that can 100% tell you that they have seen this like through and through. Like I was, I was lost, and now I'm. I can see, like, I, it was dark and, you know, things are different now. Um, you know, there are people in this room that can, like, test to that. Um, in your mental health journey, like, you cannot and should not do it alone. That is an extremely heavy and impossible weight to carry on your own. Um, one Bible verse that, like, that really helped me kind of understand and, like, try, kind of change my expectations of, or my, never mind. <laughs> um, it's in, or perspective on God's love, sorry. Um, but the Bible verse is in Psalms, um, chapter 34, verse 18, and it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And... This is special, this is an important verse to me because, you know, God wants to be close to the brokenhearted. You know, I feel like, you know, sometimes like when you're with your friends and you are like talking about, you know, maybe you're just kind of like putting it all out there and they're kind of like, whoa, <laughs> like, uh, that's kind of a lot for me. Like, I have my own stuff going on. Like, I, maybe you should talk to someone else about that. Um, you know, God... God wants to be close to you in your darkest moments, in your broken, brokenheartedness, like he wants to be close to you. And I think to me, like, I don't know, I, to me, like, that just means a lot, you know, because not many people want to be close to someone who is brokenhearted and, you know, struggling, like, that can be hard. Um, he embraces those who are broken and heals them of their wounds. He provides peace, hope, and joy through a relationship with Christ. Um, you know, you are never too far gone. You know, there is, God will always find a way to shine his light towards you, despite darkness being all around you. Um, in, I couldn't, like, there are lots of factors that kind of, like, led to, me being here now, like, it wasn't just, you know, seeing the light and, and embracing God's love, like, you know, I've been medicated for anxiety and depression ever since I was in seventh grade, I've consistently seen a therapist since I was in seventh grade, and um, consistent, I think, is the key word, because, I don't know, I'm a verbal processor, I, and I need to talk about my feelings in order to process them, and, but, you know, like, I, it wasn't just you know, he was at the source of it, and he was working through, you know, the, like, therapy and medication, you know, like, he's working through those things, um, you know, so I just, I don't want it to get, like, confusing, like, you should still, if you're struggling, like, you should still, I, I personally, I, like, 
live by therapy. Like, I think everyone should have a therapist. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And so that's, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Like, it wasn't just... It wasn't just me and God. Like there were lots of things, you know. I think that played that played into it, where God was the source and working through some of those things, um, if that makes sense. Um, everyone has a journey that feels impossible, and I think like I struggled in high school, and I think you will, you all will too. Um, you know, we all have our we all have our things, we all have, you know, life is just messy, it, you know, it's full of broken people, and life is just hard, not just in high school, but like, just in general, life is hard, and, you know, you will have doubts, and you will have fears, um, and you will feel disconnected, you know, sometimes, and you'll feel anxious sometimes, um, and like I said, you know, life is hard, and on top of that, or because of that, you know, the enemy is always, always, will always try and come after you, but the good news is that God is also trying to come after you and to keep you close to him. And, you know, the light always wins, you know. In a dark room, like, you flip the switch, like, it's, it's light, you know. It, there's no darkness to overtake it. Um, Lily, Austin, all of the seniors that were standing here on this panel a couple weeks ago, we are all living proof and a testament to God's faithfulness and this hope that, you know, it, it's possible to come through hard things on the other side and be better for it. Um, everything that I went through has led to this moment. Every heartbreak, every fear, every doubt, and all of the pain that I've encountered in my life has led me here, to this very moment, to share my story and give hope to those that maybe don't have hope or are uncertain of the future or just don't know. Um, you know, and then this is for me too because I'm, you know, I'm moving away from home and I'm really nervous to be honest, but, um, you know, looking back at my own story gives me hope that God is faithful and no matter what happens, you know, I will get through it because I'm standing on him. Tonight, my pain has a purpose and your pain does and will continue to have a purpose, whatever that looks like. And, um, you know, that's kind of... That's kind of my story. That's kind of how I, how I got here. <laughs> um, but I also wanted to talk a little bit to my um, fellow introverts in the hangar um, because there's something that I want to leave behind, you know, maybe a piece of advice or something. I don't know. But I'm an introvert. <laughs> I'm, but I'm, like, social. You know, I can stand up here and I can talk. And, you know, it might be a little bit, like, nerve-wracking, but... You know, I can hold a conversation. I can, you know, be around a lot of people. I can stand here and talk to all of you. But, like, naturally, I'm an introvert. Um, and it's not always easy to be a member of the hangar as an introvert. I don't know. I think um, sometimes it can be hard to jump into the midst of things and to be at the center of attention and to, you know, always kind of try and uh, keep up with everyone because <laughs> um, it can be pretty fast-paced <laughs> around here. Um, and, um, you know, I've always been pretty reserved, quiet, um, observant, or just kind of like on the outskirts of things. Um, and that's just because that's how God made me, <laughs> you know. There's nothing I can really do about that. Um, I don't know. I think like, you know, like I'm social, but my social battery drains really quickly. <laughs> so it can be hard to keep up with everyone sometimes. And most of the time, a lot of the time, I feel left behind. I feel um, sometimes like it's hard to, um, you know, especially during COVID, it was really hard for me to um, come back to the hangar because I just kind of felt like I had gotten left behind, which is, which is not true, but, you know, it can be hard, you know, being an introvert and being someone who's quiet and reserved and always trying to be you know, keeping up with everyone and um, being involved and, you know, sticking with everything. Um, 
you know, and maybe if you do feel left behind, you know, or maybe if you do feel like you were forgotten or people don't see you or everyone else moved on but you're still here or you're still there or whatever, you know, God will never leave you behind. And there are people in the hangar that will also never leave your side. It took me a little while to kind of find people in the hangar that really saw me um, for me. Um, and <laughs> my, my small group, I've never felt more seen and more loved than I do in my small group. And, you know, you know, and sometimes in the hangar, even, you know, recently, you know, it can, it can sometimes be hard. You know, sometimes I feel left behind or I feel out of place or I feel like everyone's moved on or, you know, everyone's, you know, doing this and I'm just kind of like here on the outskirts and everyone kind of forgot about me. <laughs> um, and, you know, but, and then I have my small group and I have my friends who are, who are there with me and like, you know, you're not left behind. Like, we, like, we're here, like, we're with you, we see you, and like I said, like, I've never felt more loved and more seen than I am, like, in my small group, um, yeah, and I believe that God led me and the people in my small group and, you know, all the other people that I think really see me for who I am, I think, you know, it happened in God's timing, I think God brought us together in his timing, and, um, you know, so, I know that sometimes, you know, maybe this is the case, maybe it's not the case, but maybe sometimes, like, throughout your journey in the hangar, it might be, it might be hard um, to stick with it. Um, I don't know. But um, if you do find yourself, like, in that place, like, you know, I encourage you to persevere and to be patient um, as, you know, it took some time, but I finally found some people in my life, in this community, that see me for who I am, and I'm never left behind when I'm with them. And that's not something that I have anywhere else, you know, my whole life, every, everyone I've ever known, like, I've never felt more loved and more seen than I do in my small group. Um, and like I said, I just encourage you, if you ever find yourself like that, you know, this community is special, and I encourage you to persevere and to push through and to keep trying, and in God's timing, you know, you will find people, whether they're in here or not, I'm not really sure, but, you know, he will help, he will guide you, you know, to your people, and, um, yeah. <laughs> um, there's so much that I want to, there's so much that I've learned, there's so much that I want to say, you know, to all of you, there's so much that I want to, like, leave behind with all of you, um, and I'm really sad, you know, to see this place go, but I'm excited for, you know, all of the new memories. And this will always be, like, a special place to me, and I will always have the memories that I've made um, in this community. And I really encourage you guys to stick with it. You know, do not let this place go. You know, it, it might, it's not always easy. Um, it's, it's hard sometimes. But I really encourage you to keep trying and to stick with it. And you will find people that love you and see you for who you are. You don't have to change who you are to be a part of this community. You don't have to be something you're not. You don't have to try and be something you're not. You've just, you can be exactly who you are and you could be a member of this community. And I just really hope that, you know, you can see that too. Um, I'm gonna pray for us. And then I think Kyle has something. Dear God, Thank you again for this incredible opportunity to be here tonight. Um, I could not consider myself more lucky to be a member of this community these past six years. And there's so much that I wanna say and there's so much that I wanna leave behind with this group, but I just hope that you can give them the strength and the courage and the perseverance to keep, stick with it and keep with it even when it feels hard sometimes because this community really is so special. And I pray that everyone in this room, past hangar students, future hangar students can see just how special this place really is. I thank you for this opportunity and for all of the people in this room. And I pray that 
what I said tonight meant something to someone in this room, or at least a little bit to, to everyone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Guys, before you um, head out to eat, I want you to do real fast if we can. We're going to gather in the lobby right out here, the family lobby real fast, and pray for our seniors. So if you can move out there real fast, follow Jess. She's out there um, in the hallway. We're just going to pray for our seniors out there because it's a little hard to get everybody up here. So shuffle out there real fast. We'll pray for them, and you guys can take off to your groups.